Empezamos con el entrenador, por favor. <risa> Alonso. Quería preguntarte, en este partido tan importante, en el estreno de la Champions, ¿a qué nivel llega tu Sevilla en este comienzo de temporada? Como quieras, si yeah, prefieres. Yeah, okay, so, very important match tomorrow night. The Champions League starts out, the Champions League campaign starts out. What sort of state of mind are we in? How are Seville? How are we going into this match? Creo que en, en crescendo, vamos después de haber clasificado a Champions en dos partidos estresantes para nosotros y eh, complejos. Luego en la Liga encontramos una regularidad, nos hemos mostrado muy sólidos, sobre todo defensivamente, y en el partido con Eibar hemos liberado nuestro ataque y hemos encontrado una actuación que nos llena de confianza. El deseo es repetir mañana a partir de esa actuación la posesión del balón, continuar atacando con profundidad, con una imaginación y transformarnos en ese equipo dominante de los partidos a partir del balón. Si me preguntas, me gustaría parecerme mucho al equipo de Eibar y jugar cada vez mejor. Um, I'd say, in summary, I think we're, we're, we're growing as a team, growing as a squad. First and foremost, we've got to this stage of the Champions League, having qualified through two tough legs uh, in, the, in the final qualifying stage. Quite a stressful experience, but we made it. I think we've shown a reasonable amount of consistency in the league, been solid at the back, um, and I think against Abar we managed to kind of free up our attack a little bit more. So um, what I'm looking for is a repeat performance uh, that we saw at the, the, the weekend against Abar. We've gained a lot of confidence from that fixture. I want to see us trying to impose ourselves on the game. We had a lot of possession in the game against Abar, and you know if we can repeat that um, that attacking style, uh, we, we got behind, we got in behind quite a few times, attack with depth, and managed to dominate the ball and have a lot of possession. Um, you know, uh, if we can recreate that uh, tomorrow night, that would be marvelous. No, tú, tú eres el que ha pedido la B, no busco para atrás. Given um, all the teams in this particular group, um, people might consider that tomorrow night the two group favourites are going head to head. That said, do you think it's really important to get a positive result if your final aim of qualification is to try and top the group? No, yo creo que todos los partidos son fundamentales eh, y que el favoritismo es una cosa que hay que poner en práctica, no es una cosa teórica, a mi entender. Eh, Ningún partido será más determinante que otros, seguramente cuando se llegue al final de, la, de los partidos entre el grupo, pero ningún partido es más importante que otro. Y somos humildes, somos precavidos y tenemos grandes ambiciones de puertas hacia adentro, sabiendo nuestra fortaleza y le daremos la mayor atención tanto a este partido como a los demás contra nuestros otros rivales, no creo, como usted me decía, que exista un favoritismo previo eh, y si existe, creo que es una cuestión que uno debe llevar al campo y demostrar en su juego. Esa ambición de querer pasar de grupo tiene que traducirse en el campo. Um, I think that really if you're talking about favoritism uh, for any competition, it's, it's something, it's all right talking in theory about who happens to be favourites. But I think uh, it's, it's what you do in practice out there on the field. I, I would say that every match in this group stage phase is very, very important. I wouldn't say that one was more important than, than any other. Maybe as you get to the last game or last couple of games, they, they get a little bit of importance as, as qualification is being decided. But I would say that we're very humble. We come here in a, with a humble attitude, but we come here with a lot of... Confidence as well. Um, we want to show our strength as a team. Um, you know, I, I think that in terms of 
uh, trying to get out of the group. We share the ambition of the other teams in this in this group. Uh, I, I, as I say, I don't think there are any favourites uh, at this stage of the competition. So early, you can't say that one team has favouritism over another. We all share that same uh, ambition to get out of the group. But what's important, as I said, is to show that ambition and show and prove that any favouritism out there on the field by what you do uh, in actions. Could I just ask about one particular player, Muriel? Uh, Muriel, do you think he's ready um, in the right condition to play tomorrow night? Sí, lo veo capaz de iniciar el partido. Eso no quiere decir de que lo inicie, pero sí lo he visto de que está con nosotros, con capacidad de disputar el puesto con Wiz. Eh, son dos atacantes muy peligrosos de diferentes características y sí confiamos mucho en Luis y sabemos de su potencial. Eh, Lo veo con capacidad de meterse en el equipo ¿sí? y de desarrollar y darnos todo ese potencial de gran futbolista que es. Um, he, yeah, he, he could start. He's certainly able to start, but then at the same time, I'm not saying that he necessarily will. I think uh, alongside Luis, we've got him, both he and Luis are two very dangerous strikers, and I trust I trust them. Uh, and I think in terms of uh, what they can bring to the side, in terms of attacking threat and goals, I think they can develop his game and, and be be good for us. Do you pay uh, huge attention to the fact that your opponents tomorrow night conceded five goals in, in the Premier League at the weekend? Creo que hay un antecedente que jugó casi todo el partido con un hombre menos. Eh, tal vez es mucho más referencia es el partido al que le gana 4-0 al Arsenal que el que pierde 5-0 con el City. Es un equipo muy peligroso, muy vertical, muy rápido de tres cuartos de campo en adelante con una gran elaboración en su centro del campo el partido con el City jugó más de una hora con un hombre menos eh, y no es referencial a nivel táctico sí, eh, el partido anterior es un rival muy fuerte en su casa es muy fuerte aún más y defiende un sistema, juega de la misma manera siempre a partir de muy buenos elaboradores del juego en su medio del campo y atacantes verticales y desequilibrantes. Habrá que adueñarnos del balón, usarlo con inteligencia, pasar mucho tiempo en campo rival usándolo con corrección, con imaginación y con cuidado, y evitar que esa transición defensa-ataque nos haga daño. I think that uh, you've got to remember that the Liverpool played for more than, well, they played the majority of that game with one man uh, less than Manchester City. I think that's more of a reference. And even more of a reference, I think, is the fact, if you want to look at uh, Liverpool's form, is the last time they played at home, they beat Arsenal 4-0. Yeah. Um, they're very dangerous. They're a side that likes to get forward um, vertically. Um, very dangerous in the final uh, quarter. Uh, when they get the ball attacking in the final three quarters of the field coming out of defence, they're very good in the transitions of the game. Uh, as I say, you've got to really say that it doesn't have any tactical bearing the fact they played for that, that result against City because they played for an hour uh, with, with, with one man having been sent off. Very strong at home, um, assertive in defence and when they do get the ball, they're very bright and very imaginative and very creative once they get in the, in the final third with some very uh, dangerous strikers and midfielders to, to cause problems and they, they, they like to main, maintain possession of the ball and also press high as well when they're trying to recuperate the ball. Given that maybe there was one or two players uh, rotated uh, for the game against Abar, given that it was coming straight off the back of an international break, do you think that we might see some uh, changes in the side tomorrow night from the weekend? Sí, algunos. Eh, la convocatoria a Eva estuvo marcada por la ausencia de toda la semana de la gente convocada a sus selecciones. Ahora estamos todos juntos, nos reintegramos y definiremos el equipo. Mañana pueden existir cambios. Soy de la idea de escoger sobre el final para ver la recuperación de todos eh, y esperar hasta el último momento para conformar el equipo lo más fuerte posible. Mañana 
será una gran prueba para nosotros desde el punto de vista físico también, un partido que nos exigirá una presión muy ajustada, por eso también la selección de la gente adecuada para soportar el esfuerzo, sobre todo en la mitad del campo, que el partido nos exigirá. Yeah, you're right. There were one or two changes at the weekend purely because we'd had one or two absences during the international break. Now we're all back together. We've had a chance to train together. And after tonight, we're just going to um, wait until the last possible moment before we decide what will be our strongest lineup uh, when I take into account to see how well everyone's recovered from, from the international break and the game against uh, Abar. We know it's going to be a big test tomorrow. Also, it's going to be a big physical test as well, particularly in midfield. So, you know, it will be good to have players available um, to take on that physical challenge uh, against Liverpool and their midfield. ¿Timidar? ¿Qué que, que se asusta? El... Yeah, fear, yeah. Does, uh, coming here to Anfield, is it, is it like a scary thing? Is it something that might frighten people? Yo creo que sucede todo lo contrario. Un futbolista se ilusiona, se motiva, se refuerza en escenarios como este. Escenarios como este suceden pocas veces en la vida. Hay que saber disfrutarlo y dentro de ese disfrute tener la capacidad de dar lo mejor de sí. La personalidad se muestra en partidos como este y cuento con un, una plantilla, un equipo verdaderamente valiente, así que, que mañana se esperamos jugar nuestro mejor fútbol en un grandísimo escenario. No, I think it's the exactly the opposite, you know, I think you players of a certain level and personality uh, grow when they come to an atmosphere <clears throat> in a stadium like this, they're gaining strength. Uh, you know, a few times in your career do you get a chance to come and play in front of an atmosphere like this and I think it's something to behold and something to really enjoy. Uh, players try and give of their best and I think that's when you show what real characters you have in your squad and I'm confident uh, I count on players in my squad that uh, are, are very brave Uh, very honest, I've got lots of character and personality and I hope, as I say, that we, we play to the best of our ability tomorrow. Uh, double question, not related, either one. Um, first of all, it looks like, <laughs> looks like Coutinho is going to play tomorrow night. Do you think he's one of the best players in the world? Uh, he'll be lining up against you tomorrow night. And secondly, um, people say that possibly the kind of anthem, uh, like You'll Never Walk Alone, and the Seville uh, anthem or uh, song, that people say that they're the most atmospheric and most sort of spine chilling uh, anthems in all of world football. Do you have a comment? I'm going to answer the more simple yo me emociono con mi himno. El otro lo escucharé, evidentemente. Pero a mí me pone la piel de gallina escuchar a mis seguidores cantar nuestro himno. Con respecto a Coutinho, Salah o Mané, no podría diferenciar quién es Firmino, no podría diferenciar cuál es el mejor atacante. Todos son muy buenos futbolistas y no creo que un futbolista esté por encima del equipo de nuestro rival. Es un equipo muy fuerte, con muy buenos jugadores en todas las líneas y no podría señalar a alguien. Eh, estaremos preparados para, para enfrentarlos, sabemos de sus capacidades y confiamos en, en las nuestras. Um, as regards the first question, Coutinho, I wouldn't like to set him apart from any of the other Liverpool um, offensive players. You know, you look at the likes of Salah, Mane, um, and Firmino, they're all great, great players. You know, it's, uh, I think it'd be unfair to, to put one above any of the, the other three. Certainly, it's, it's about uh, us being prepared and making sure that we're, we're being ready for any of the, the attacking threats that Liverpool decide to line up against us tomorrow night. And in terms of uh, the most emotional, Uh, him all I can say is a pre-match song if you like all I can say is that when I listen when I hear um, the Seville fans sing singing our particular hymn I get really emotional I get sort of um, it makes my hairs on the back of my head, uh, head yeah. neck stand up and yeah I I'll listen respectfully to the other one but obviously my one is the one that affects me emotionally any question more 
bigger in the sky. Can I just ask you about the, you've got Nzonzi, you've got Navas, you've got Nito. Players in your squad who've played in the Premier League, they may well have played here. Does that help with their preparations if we've got players who've played in England? Ayuda con la preparación el hecho de que haya en vuestro, vuestro plantel jugadores que tienen experiencia de jugar en la Premier. Puede, nos ha ayudado, sí. Yo creo que el nivel de nuestros futbolistas ayuda a la preparación de un partido así. Eh, no hay datos apoyados en ellos o en la información de ellos, pero les ayudará a jugar el partido. Todo el mundo está listo, está ilusionado con esta competición. Mañana vamos a vivir... Un grandísimo partido de fútbol lleno de grandes jugadores y ojalá nuestro fútbol esté por encima del de nuestro rival. Um, maybe, maybe, but I think above all, rather than sort of, obviously their experience might help. We've not got any kind of specific information that they've given us on their experience in the Premier League, but you know their quality will help. But our quality throughout the squad helps us prefer uh, more than anything else. You know we're going to make sure that we're ready. We're going to experience, uh, and I think everyone in the ground is going to experience a top, top game tomorrow night. And it's all about ourselves being uh, up to that occasion and being able to take on the challenge that Liverpool provide. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, good night. Vamos, Alberto. Espera que traduzca el ido al inglés. Uh, okay, um, from Seville Radio. Uh, what the, what's the feeling like amongst the players uh, before tomorrow night's very very important date? Buenas tardes. Sí, con con sensaciones positivas, sabiendo que que enfrentamos un un rival muy difícil que tiene gente de mucha jerarquía pero también centralizándonos en lo que tenemos que hacer como equipo, de lo que venimos haciendo, de mantener la, nuestra idea. Entonces, ojalá que mañana todo lo que planificamos y, y lo que trabajamos durante todo este tiempo será como todos queremos. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, no, we feel very, very positive. Uh, we know that we're up against a tough opponent tomorrow night. You know, in terms of uh, one of the top class in European hierarchy, if you like. But we know what we've, we know what we've got to do. We're coming here with some clear ideas, and we want to try and uh, make sure that we carry out our plans. Uh, we've been working well recently, and and if we can put into practice the stuff that we've been working on in recent games, hopefully we can give a good account of ourselves tomorrow night. From uh, Antenna 3, uh, up to what point are you impressed by this magnificent, if you are impressed, uh, by this magnificent, these magnificent surroundings, this magnificent stadium? Sabemos la, la historia que tiene el estadio, lo, lo importante que es el rival de turno, pero siento que dentro de la cancha seremos 11 contra 11, eh, dos equipos que se habrán estudiado muy bien, y como dije recién, adentro de la cancha tenemos que hacer nuestro, nuestro partido lo que planificamos para tratar de sacar lo, los tres puntos que para nosotros sería muy importante. Yeah, we know that it's a place with a lot of history and as I said just before we're playing against a, a big a massive team in Liverpool but you know that once we do uh, both sides get out there onto the field tomorrow we know it is 11 players against 11 players the two teams. It's all about trying to impose our own style of play, playing our own game um, by while being mindful of what Liverpool have got to offer. And it's all about, you know, both sides will be after the three points, but we're certainly going out for the victory to set us on, uh, set us out positively in the group phases, group stage. Do you think, uh, have Liverpool got some unfinished business or maybe a score to settle, if you like, uh, given the result uh, just over a year ago uh, in the Europa League final? Do you think they'll be wanting some form of revenge, maybe? Sinceramente, no, no lo sé. Seguramente que somos dos equipos, eh, siento importantes, que tratan de ser protagonistas en sus torneos y seguramente ellos querrán hacer valer eso y tratar de de sacar los tres puntos. Creo que, como dije, 
van a ser dos, dos equipos importantes con gente de jerarquía de los dos lados. Pienso que el pasado ya, ya habrá quedado atrás, pero los dos equipos vamos a querer ganar y ojalá que nosotros hagamos mejor las cosas. You know, to answer that totally honestly, I, I don't really know. Um, all I do know is that, again, it's two teams tomorrow night will both want to try and play well. They will want to play well. They'll want to get the three points just as much as we do. We know that they're a squad full of top, top players. But what I would say is that anything, uh, any, you know, the match that you, remember, that you sort of referred to then, that's in the past. And what's important is tomorrow and, and how we uh, acquit ourselves in the game and how we, how we sort of focus on that rather than anything that's happened previously. More question for our player. Okay, thank you very much. Then we let him to go to the dressing room. Pablo, puedes acompañarlo. Yeah.